Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today I'm going to talk about what I am making right now, what I'm cooking in my kitchen during these late summer months, or as I like to call them, midsummer. I feel like we have a solid two months of warm or hot weather, at least here where I live. And I'm really embracing that, even though it seems like everybody starts talking about fall on the 1st of August, but it is still squarely in the middle of summer here. And so because of that, cooking is a little bit different than other times of the year. We have abundant vegetables available to us, no matter if you have a garden or you don't, uh, it's all in season. That does definitely influence what I cook. I also put together a little grocery haul. So I'm just gonna go through all of the things that I buy, where I buy them, where I'm currently sourcing them, it changes from time to time. So an updated version of a grocery haul. Real quick, before I jump into those topics, I did wanna talk about a brand new book that I now have out. I talk a lot about cooking from scratch on my channel and on my podcast and my blog. A lot of you are new in that journey or looking for inspiration for just some new ideas. And so I am coming out now with some seasonal meal plans. I plan to make four of them. This is my first one. It's a four week meal plan. It, it has grocery lists for each week of the month. It has some basic recipes for things like breads and rolls and condiments like mayo and dressings and things like that. And then it actually gets into a day by day meal plan. So one meal for each day for four weeks. So this is something brand new. It's actually a PDF download. I did have mine printed at a local printer so I could show it, but it is now finally available. It took a ton more work than I expected, so I definitely thought I would have this out sooner than I did, and I'm going to start working on the next one. But you can find this over at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse meal plan book. All right, first let's talk about what I am making right now seasonally. This is my favorite time of the year to cook. Whenever I think about summer from winter, I am just longing for all of the fresh vegetables and herbs and being able to go out and grab something fresh, whether you have a small garden or no garden at all, if you just go to a weekly farmer's market. A lot of people also have neighbors and friends who are willing to share produce. So there are, if you keep your eyes out, maybe on roadside stands or wherever, there is always something fresh this time of year and I love to utilize all of that. So the first thing I'm making a ton of is salsas. Lots of salsa, so much. So for a tomato-based traditional type of salsa, some people call this more of a pico de gallo, I use tomatoes from the garden, onions, maybe some jalapenos if the kids aren't going to eat it, fresh garlic minced, some lime juice and salt and pepper, and just stir it all up. Now, the longer it sits in the fridge, the better, well, to an extent. A few days in the fridge does make the taste develop, and taste a little bit better. It's also really good fresh. I also do like to add in some fresh cilantro. Now, where I live, cilantro is more of a cooler, earlier thing, herb that is no longer really available. Now, if you plant it in the shade, I believe it'll go a lot longer mine bolts really quickly. And so I just purchased cilantro from the grocery store. Another salsa that I'm making that we are loving is a cucumber mango salsa. This is something that I made several years ago but kind of forgot about for a really long time. Essentially, you just peel some cucumbers, dice them, dice mangoes and jalapenos and onions and add some lime juice and mix it all up and it's a really beautiful salsa the way that the sweetness of the mango complements the cucumber i don't know about you but we have so many cucumbers right now i'm kind of over them honestly but this salsa does really help to use them up another thing we're doing is pickles. Now one way I like to make pickles is by fermenting them in a salt brine. Basically you just cut up some cucumbers, add dill and garlic, and then make a brine. I like to use 
four tablespoons of salt to a half gallon jar of water. So I will just dissolve the salt in a little bit of hot water, then dilute it to half gallon, and then use that brine to ferment my vegetables. Let it sit out for a few days. It'll get sort of a fermented taste, so a little bit pickly. That's really great. Another good option is just refrigerator pickles. So equal parts water and vinegar, a little bit of honey and salt. Add that to a jar that's packed with sliced cucumbers, good dill and garlic. That's really good. My kids have really been loving it. We have way too many jars of that in the fridge right now. So we're gonna have to get through those before they go bad. But my kids love, love, love pickles. And so we are eating a ton of those. Another thing I've been making a lot of is flatbreads and quick type grilled breads that don't require me to turn on the oven. Now in the winter, I do a ton of sourdough bread. I haven't been doing it as much lately. And I think it's just one we're out of the house. So I'm not inside in the cozy warm house doing stretch and folds and all of that with my sourdough bread. Also, I try to turn on the oven as little as possible. We do have an antique range or it's more, I guess, vintage 1949 range it does give off a lot of heat which is wonderful in the winter but in the summer i don't use it a ton i mean i do use it some whenever i have something i really want to make that requires the oven to be turned on i just will turn the ac down a little bit and <laughs> use it but that's not ideal and so quick breads they're really great because you can obviously make them whenever you're not in the kitchen very long and then also they don't require the oven i've been doing an einkorn one where i combine about three cups einkorn flour three teaspoons yeast a teaspoon of salt two tablespoons of olive oil and a cup of water and i just bring that together into a dough divide it into eight equal parts and then roll it out but not as flat as a tortilla a little bit less flat than that and then just grill it on both sides on the cast iron skillet this makes a really lovely addition to any meal because it stretches it. In that same type of thing, I've been doing lots of sourdough English muffins. Now these do require a little bit of thought ahead of time because you need to get the dough going the night before. But I love that you could just grill them on a cast iron skillet and then serve them with a sandwich. So one of the sandwiches we really like in the summer is a veggie cream cheese sandwich. So you just slice up tomatoes and cucumbers add some cream cheese if you have some onion that's really good on it as well to something like a sourdough english muffin that's a really good fresh sandwich and i feel like english muffins are the easiest thing because the night before you just combine let's see here half a cup of starter a cup of water two cups of flour let it ferment add in a teaspoon half a teaspoon of salt a teaspoon of baking soda and i believe a tablespoon of honey the recipe exact recipe is on the blog, but that is what I do from memory. And then grill them on the cast iron skillet, and then you're ready to make those veggie sandwiches. Omelets, BLTs. Omelets are great this time of year because if you go to a local farmer's market or keep your eye out for signs, you will find people who are selling eggs because with such long days, chickens are laying right now. And so people who have chickens have an abundance of eggs, whereas in the winter, it's a little bit more scarce. And then also so good with fresh tomatoes, fresh herbs. Yesterday I made an omelet for myself where I used chanterelles, which are a mushroom that we actually love to go forage, but we have not gone out this year to look for them. So I picked some up at a farmer's market. Onions, I whisked up a couple of eggs, added it to my cast iron skillet so that it filled out the whole bottom. I added a little bit of butter first preheated it. Let it cook until it was basically done in that flat shape. I sauteed some chanterelles and onions, put it inside with a little bit of cheese, folded it over, added some diced tomatoes, diced basil, and I made some homemade sour cream, which wasn't really. It was a homemade Greek yogurt that I just made my normal instant pot yogurt, allowed some of the whey to drip out with some cheesecloth in a bowl. And then I use that as sour cream. So I just put that on top. It was so delicious. It was like summer on a dish. For the BLTs, my newest favorite thing to do, which if, if you watch my YouTube channel, you've seen me do this already, is make cheddar waffles. So I make my normal sourdough waffle recipe, which is two cups of starter, two eggs, four or five tablespoons of oil, a tablespoon of honey, 
half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda, I believe, and a cup of cheddar cheese. Cook that in a waffle iron and it makes the most toasty, delicious bread. You wanna make sure to cook it a little bit extra so that it gets really crispy, but it is the best little vessel for a fresh BLT, which in the summertime with all the tomatoes, BLTs are always a good idea. We've been doing them constantly lately. Made some little homemade mayo to put on top of it. Super easy meal that is ready really quickly. Lots of skillet dinners. Now for that, like yesterday I made one where I diced sweet potatoes, I added sausage, little bit of diced zucchini, onion. I sauteed all the vegetables, browned the sausage, added some fresh sage, and then I actually topped it with some eggs and baked it more like a hash. You can top it with shredded cheese. You can put any veggies you have. You can do ground beef, ground pork, sausage, any meat you have. And those skillet dinners are great because you can make so many different combinations of them. So you don't feel like you're having the same thing over and over again, but it's a nice one pot dish that you can whip up really quickly. Okay, another thing we've been loving is pizza. I just said that I don't turn the oven on. Well, I actually totally do when it comes to pizza because roasted tomato pizza is the best. So first I make my sourdough crust, which basically I just preheat a bunch of cast iron skillets, add sourdough starter. It bakes almost instantly upon hitting that hot cast iron skillet, drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pop it back in the oven for about five or 10 minutes. It comes out of the cast iron skillet really easily. Meanwhile, I slice up some tomatoes really thin, layer them in a, an even layer on a baking sheet. Now I like to put down parchment paper just to make the mess a little bit easier to clean up. Drizzle with olive oil and then roast them in a really hot oven with some salt, pepper, and they come out all caramelized. And then I layer those into the sourdough pizza crust, drizzle with olive oil, add some fresh basil, mozzarella, so good. So just instead of a sauce, we do the roasted tomatoes and this is something that we do all summer long. Getting as much tomatoes eaten as possible. I've also been making a homemade pasta sauce, which I just cut up some tomatoes. I do not peel them. Add basil, rosemary, thyme, sage, whatever herbs I can gather from the garden, onions, garlic, and then just let it simmer for a while. Add some salt and pepper, maybe a dash of honey or sugar, and then hit it with an immersion blender and serve that over pasta. Another thing I've been making a lot of is gnocchi. This is a potato-based pasta. I do have the recipe over on the blog. The flour component in it is einkorn. It's some cheese, baked potato, einkorn, eggs, salt, pepper, combined, sliced, boiled. And the reason I've been loving it is it's sort of like pasta, but a lot easier to make. And then I can toss it with something like basil pesto. And we have so much basil. I always feel bad every year because I never get out there and really preserve it like I should. We just try to eat as much of it as possible during the season while it's fresh and pesto is the best way to do that. I do have the recipe, all the exact amounts for the gnocchi and the pesto over on farmhouseonmoon.com if you search it there. But if you serve that with some either sausage or some grilled chicken, maybe some diced peppers, some diced fresh tomatoes, man, I think I wanna make that for lunch now. <laughs> so, so good, so fresh, and it utilizes all of what summer has to offer. Okay, so those are some of my favorite things that I'm making right now in my kitchen. Let's dive into grocery sources and where I get everything. So first up on the list, I have pantry. Now almost everything in the pantry comes from Thrive Market and Aldi. So I just made a little list here so that I could share with you where it's all coming from. So organic ketchup, we use that for crispy potatoes. Love it for that. It's probably the number one reason we use that. We get that from Aldi or Thrive Market, just depending on if I'm making a Thrive Market order, I'll throw it in. If I'm at Aldi, I'll grab it there. They both do offer organic ketchup. Einkorn pasta from Jovial. That you can either buy on the jovial.com or you can buy it on Thrive Market. Mostly I get it on Thrive Market, but I have bought it in bulk so that I reach the free shipping threshold from Jovial as well. Pasta sauce, now I'm not buying as much of that right now because of the garden. But my favorite source for that is Thrive Market. They also do have an organic variety at 
Aldi. Popcorn, I, we buy a lot of popcorn. Luke and I like to make popcorn at night. There is a sprouted version from Thrive Market. It's really good. Flour, so for all purpose and bread flour, which I use for my no need sourdough bread recipe, I'm not using it as much right now for that, but I am actually making quite a bit of bagels right now. I get that from either Thrive Market or I have a local grocery store called Schnooks. Now that just depends on how quickly I need it. I prefer to get it from, from Thrive Market because it's cheaper on there, but if I've run out and I really want it for bagels because it does just make a lighter, fluffier bagel than freshly ground, then I will run and get it at my local store, Schnucks. They don't sell that brand that I like at Aldi. And it is really expensive. So like I said, I prefer to buy it from Thrive Market. So when I do, I buy several bags at once. Einkorn flour, I get that off Thrive Market. Um, I also do, which I'm gonna go into the grain section, get bulk einkorn berries. But for an all-purpose einkorn flour, I get that from Thrive Market. They have the best price. I don't think anywhere locally actually even sells all-purpose einkorn flour at all. No, I haven't checked Walmart. I wonder if they do. But I just, at the moment, grab that off Thrive Market. Oils, those come from Thrive Market and Aldi. Olive oil, um, I actually have one I like from both companies. And so I'll just, depending on where I'm getting groceries at that time, will order. Avocado oil, I know, almost always get from Aldi. And then organic coffee, again, Aldi and Thrive Market, both have kinds that I like. I like a medium roast organic coffee, and they both do offer that. Tortilla chips, we do a lot of tortilla chips. <laughs> Aldi has an organic variety that we really love, thankfully. Because right now, another thing I forgot to mention in my what we're making right now part, is I have been loving making taco salad. So basically I will brown up some meat, some ground beef or sausage, put that on the table with lettuce, homemade salsa, sauerkraut, tortilla chips, shredded cheese. It's kind of like a smorgasbord of taco salad fixings, avocado, sometimes I'll even do corn where I'll kind of grill a corn on my cast iron skillet and brown it a little bit with some butter. That just tastes really great. And so we do a lot of that. And then also with all the salsas I've been making, the other day when I got groceries from Aldi, I bought like five or six bags of organic tortilla chips and Luke's like, why so many chips? I'm like, well, we have so much salsa. This is a great way to eat up fresh vegetables. And so we are eating more of those right now than any other time of the year. Peanut butter, there's an organic version at Thrive Market and Aldi. Dried fruit, mostly Thrive Market. There are a few dried fruits I can get at Aldi, but they don't always have the organic varieties that I like, and then a lot of them also have additional sugar. Nuts, Aldi and Thrive Market. Now, I'm not going through as many nuts right now as I do in the winter. In the winter time, I make more granolas and I'll top like a sweet potato dish with nuts. Right now, I just haven't been doing that as much, but I do get walnuts and pecans for that. Coconut aminos, I get on Thrive Market. That's another thing I like to make is cook some rice, meat, veggies, toss it with that coconut aminos and some fried eggs, make a little fried rice type of dish. I always will keep that on hand in my pantry and I could find it, I believe, it might be at Schnucks, but anything specialty like that, or what at least for my area would be specialty, is really expensive at a store like that. Maple syrup I get from Thrive Market and I believe that was all I wrote down for my pantry section. Now supplements, right now because I am 28 weeks pregnant, I am taking iron, and vitamin C. Now, I, I actually ran out of prenatal, so I've only been focusing really lately on iron and vitamin C. I take the vitamin code, vitamin C. I've been getting this Faro food. Now this I got from a different website. I believe the Standard Process website. Um, and then this I got from Thrive Market. I also get magnesium from Thrive Market. And then I've been taking a tablespoon a day of bee pollen for copper that I get from Thrive Market. All right, down to vegetables and fruits. This again varies by season based on what I will purchase and what's available. So right now, the primary sources for fruits and vegetables are garden, farmer's market, friends and family. So for example, the other day, a family member of mine 
said that she has rows of blackberries and they were not keeping up with it. And this is what happens in the summer if you just sort of dig around, ask around. People often plant, including, this is including myself, ambitious gardens and then life is still going on. You kind of almost expect life to stop in the summer, but it's still going on and so there's not always all of this time to preserve like you think. And before you know it, you're just happy if the vegetables and fruits get eaten, regardless of who eats them. So we went and picked blackberries at her house. So now I have bags of frozen blackberries. So every smoothie, I actually have a blender sitting right here, it is now a blackberry smoothie for a little while. And then in our garden, we are overflowing with tomatoes primarily and herbs. We do have peppers. Well, we were overflowing with cucumbers. Those are starting to trail off a bit. The peppers, it's more like just the amount to keep up with, but tomatoes are very much in abundance to the point where I'm gonna have to be giving them to friends and family just so I feel like they get used up. And also I might throw some to the chickens as well. I actually need to go out to the garden today and pick anything that we didn't get to in time that's rotted and give that all to the chicken so that it ultimately does turn into eggs for us. And then farmer's market, I've been getting a lot of things that I didn't grow over there. Anything that I can get there, I will. And then I go to Aldi for everything else. So things like frozen berries, I almost year round am purchasing from there. Now right now, a little bit of a lull because of all the blackberries, but then I'll be back to purchasing those there again. I always get avocados from there. Most of the time onions and potatoes right now, those are coming from local sources. We always get bananas. They obviously can't be grown locally, but we always have them. And usually when I buy bananas, I buy about 10 pounds a week. I let them ripen for a few days and then I peel them, cut them in half and put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them. So that way they're really good in kefir smoothies. So we always have frozen bananas. Of course, while they're ripening, the kids do eat some of them fresh as well. Oranges come from Aldi. I don't always have oranges, but I have really been loving a orange chicken dish lately. It is not super seasonal because nothing in it really couldn't be acquired other times of the year and probably more seasonally, but I just have been like craving it. I bred some chicken in einkorn flour and salt and then fry it in coconut oil, cook rice separately, and then I make a sauce of freshly squeezed orange juice, coconut aminos, vinegar, maple syrup. It is so good. It's a labor of love. It's one of those dishes that isn't easy. You are gonna be in the kitchen a while, but sometimes I'm just craving it and I'm like, I have an extra hour, I'm just gonna do this. Honey comes from farmer's market and Amish right now. Now we have an Amish community somewhat close, but I'm actually willing to pay a premium for some of the shops around here that actually go to the farm and then sell their honey at more of a retail price versus a wholesale price. We used to, when we lived a little bit closer, would make regular trips up to the Amish community and purchase it all there. But right now I'm just finding the same honey, but in shops around here, and it's a lot more expensive, well not a lot more expensive, but definitely worth it to not have to drive out there. And then I also grabbed some honey at the farmer's market the other day from a local beekeeper. So I have kind of both sources, but I love keeping honey on hand, like a lot of honey for baking, topping uh, sourdough pancakes and waffles. Now we do also buy maple syrup, but I like to use honey more often than the maple syrup because it's local, so it's really good for you. And then also it's cheaper as well. For grains and beans, these sources vary. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. I actually paused the video to go milk the cow and now I'm back in. The best source right now, Mock Mill still does have einkorn berries in 50 pound bags. During 2020, they were often out of stock. So if you go to bit.ly forward slash einkorn berries, I made that link so that you could purchase, uh, so you could easily find einkorn berries. I also sometimes get them from clnf.org. That's Country Life Natural Foods. Now you can put together a co-op in your area so that you can get free shipping, like a truck delivery if you order a certain amount, or if you're a large family, you might just meet that yourself. I've done that a few times, just with a few friends 
and we bulk ordered grains from there. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for einkorn, if you're looking for whole wheat, it's one of those things that I don't always buy from the same place because it kind of just depends on where I'm ordering from. Like if I'm placing an Azure standard order, it's sort of inconvenient to go pick up an Azure standard order just because, although I love Azure standard, a lot of times the delivery times aren't set in stone. So you order it, but then you're not really sure what exactly you're committing to. And there was a time when, for example, I had my sister's bachelorette party during the same time as the order. So it's good that if you are going to start doing a local Azure pickup, that you go in with a few friends so that you guys can take turns going to pick up the order in case they say, oh, it's coming tomorrow at 5 p.m. And you're like, I can't make that. So we did work it out. I worked it out with somebody who was also getting something there, but they do sell bulk grains. I also do get some animal feed from Azure Standard. I get minerals and then some of the feed for the goats, which I'm actually not giving the goats grain right now because they're not in milk. I'm just giving them hay and then they're foraging in the woods as well. Non-bulk, I actually just got an email from Jovial. They're having a sale on their boxes. They're smaller boxes of grains. Now I wouldn't probably purchase that if you have a grain mill and you're wanting to make your own flour, but if you want to use einkorn berries for like a cereal or something like that, because it is such a smaller amount, or if you just want to try it. Oatmeal, I just buy from Aldi. It's the cheapest price. I cannot find a bulk source that's cheaper. Beans, Aldi, rice. I like the Thrive Market brand for that. Dairy, this has changed recently, obviously, because I now have a dairy cow who is freshened, so she has milk. I am now getting all my raw milk from home. I used to get it from a local farm, but I've just stopped that. I've just been in such a habit of making my Instant Pot yogurt that I just, instead of making and shifting over to a different culture, I've been straining off the way with cheesecloth and just using that for sour cream. Cheeses, I did try making cheese once, it was fine, but um, I'm not getting, I was getting more milk and now I need to troubleshoot why I'm not. But I'm not getting enough milk to be making cheese. Those I get mostly from Aldi, but when I'm doing an Azure order, I always order. They have a huge block of raw cheese that I really like to get from there. Okay, meat. I have several sources. Azure Standard, I've been ordering a lot of chicken from there. So they have whole organic chickens in a big box. It's a little bit cheaper than ordering straight from a farm, but it's still not super cheap. Chicken breasts, and then I also order quite a bit from Fed From The Farm. I've talked about them before. I actually just placed a big order of a bunch of bacon and sausage because I also get half a hog. I, I should be getting it a call any day that's getting processed right now from one of my friends locally, but there's never enough bacon and sausage. There just isn't. I love using sausage in eggs, in lunch and dinner, not just breakfast. Same with bacon, especially with all of our BLTs. So I've also just ordered some sausage and bacon separately from there. I've ordered beef from my sister. I've ordered beef from another local farmer. That always kind of changes. One place I do always often fill in the gaps is Aldi does have a grass-fed organic beef, ground beef that I buy regularly because it's really cheap. And if I'm out of ground beef, because we use more ground beef than anything else, just with the kids, it's just the easiest thing. Just looked over and saw coconut oil. Forgot to mention coconut oil. I get that from the Amish, at least for a while. I bought so much last time I went that I haven't purchased coconut oil in over a year. So I'll revisit that source whenever that runs out, but for now, we're good there. And then I forgot to mention yogurt and kefir. I make those, always have, super easy to just make that yourself. All recipes over on farmhouseonboon.com. All right, make sure to go check out my brand new meal planning ebook if you need some new inspiration. If you're more of the planner type, you feel better when you have a meal plan. This walks you through shopping lists, recipes. There's a different recipe for every day in the four weeks. So for 28 meals total, you'll have a plan. If that does make you feel more prepared. Um, that is now available over at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse meal plan. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life Podcast, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.